There's a point in our lives when we're in math class and all of a sudden people start using this word function. What's a function? How is it different from a relation? And what on earth is a vertical line test? In this video, we're going to explore these concepts further and find out what they really mean. So this is a symbol that we use when using the function notation. We call this f of x, and this symbol is used interchangeably many of times with the y in an equation when writing it in the function notation, given that the equation is a function to begin with. So if you recall, a linear equation looks like this. Now, if you wanted to write the same equation in function notation, we would just replace the y with f of x and write it like so. Another example of an equation that we can write in function notation is the quadratic function. So instead of writing y equals 3 times x minus 7 squared plus 5, for example, we can instead replace the y with f of x to get the following. And it would essentially be the same thing. Now the purpose of a function can be thought of like a factory machine, where when we insert an input, it produces an output. The key is that every input produces only one output, and not any more than that. So let's pull up our example of the linear function that we looked at earlier, and try to apply it to the factory machine analogy to break down what happens when we input values into our function. Now, whatever x value we input into our function, it will produce a final value after being calculated by the equation. So, if we input 2 into f of x, the x's in the equation will be replaced by 2 as well, since that is our new input. When calculated, the function outputs a final value of 7. And if we look at the same equation down here, and compute x as 2, we end up finding out that f of 2 is indeed equal to 7. Great! And what would we get for our output if we inputted 5 instead? Well, since we plug 5 into f of x, the x's in the equation are replaced with 5 as well, and after being computed outputs a value of 16. So we find out that f of 5 is equal to 16. Alrighty, so at this point you might be wondering, what's the difference between writing y equals 3x plus 1 and f of x equals 3x plus 1 anyways? Well, essentially, they are the exact same. If we plug 4 into the x's of each of them and solve for them, we'll see that they do in fact equal the exact same answer. The only difference between these two equations are these guys over here. Now the benefit of writing it like this is that it provides us with more information overall. One piece of information is that we can immediately tell that this one is definitely a function due to the notation. Also, if for some reason we were given these two expressions alone without any context, we would automatically know that 4 was the x value that yielded the result of 13 regardless of what the function actually was. In this case, however, although we know that the yielded value is also 13, we have no idea about what the x value could have been that yielded this. So, this notation becomes much more useful in future lessons, but for now, we just need to know that it gives us more info at a glance, as well as allowing us to differentiate whether an equation is a function or not. Speaking of which, how can we tell if an equation is a function or not? Well, as we mentioned before, all x values in a function must only produce one y value. So if we put in a value for x and get two different numbers, we know right away that this is not a function. An example of such an equation is y squared is equal to x. If we plug in 9 for x, and try to solve for y, we see that if we square root both sides, we end up with y equals to plus or minus 3. 
Since we only inputted one x value but got two y values in return, we know that this equation is not a function. It is, however, considered a relation since a relation is a broader class of definition. Pretty much anything that is a set of coordinates can be seen as a relation. But again, a function is a very specific type of relation. So while every function is a relation, not every relation is a function. We can compare this to saying while all Americans are humans, not all humans are American. So in light of this, if we take a look at our equation of y squared equals x, there's a popular graphical test that can be done to check if this graph is a function or not. And it is called the vertical line test. So if we take a look at the graph for this equation and draw a perfectly vertical line down at any part of the graph, we should not be hitting two points ever. If this graph is a function, that is. But since our vertical line is hitting two points in this example, we confirm the fact that this equation is not a function. The benefit of the vertical line test is that oftentimes we might not be provided an equation for the graph that we were provided like this example. So it allows us to just quickly eyeball whether or not the graph that we're looking at is a function. For example, here are three different graphs. Without giving the equations for them, how can we tell which one is a function or not? Well, for the first one, using the vertical line test, we can see that this parabola here is a function, since any vertical line drawn down on the graph would only hit one point at a time. And what about this one here? Well, this is a linear graph. So again, using the vertical line test, we see that every line we could possibly draw only intersects one point. So this graph is in fact a function. But what about this last one here? Well, we see that the graph is a circle. And if we use the vertical line test, we can see that although at these two endpoints, the vertical line only hits one point at a time, every other line drawn within the circle would be hitting two points. Therefore, we can conclude that this graph here is not a function. So the reason why the vertical line test helps is that drawing a vertical line is like fixing an x value. At one particular x value, there should be only one y value. However, notice how we said that one x value needs to map onto only one y value and not the other way around. For example, if we drew a horizontal line through this graph, we'd see that for this one y value, we have multiple different x values. But this is most definitely still a function, since a function does not require every x value to have a unique y value. It just requires every x value to have no more than a single y value. Awesome. So we hope you learned a lot from this lesson and are now comfortable with functions, relations, and how to use the vertical line test. That's it for this video, and we hope to see you guys in the next one.